But first, our big story tonight. Three Supreme Court judges will now investigate the allegation that a young lawyer was sexually harassed by an Apex Court judge during the time she interned with him. The young lawyer waited for several months before she wrote about her experience. She explains the delay in her blog and her eventual decision to go public, saying her reluctance to wage a legal battle against the judge had left her feeling cowardly. An alleged victim finally speaking up in her blog about being sexually assaulted by a reputed Supreme Court judge 11 months ago. It's got the entire Judicial Committee to sit up and take notice and the Chief Justice of India has set up a three-judge panel to probe the allegations after the AG brought it before the court saying, As the head of the institution, I am also concerned about the allegation and anxious whether the statement is true or not. The Supreme Court of India is seriously concerned about the allegations made by a law graduate who interned with the Supreme Court judge last December. In her blog, she writes, For my supposed diligence, I was rewarded with sexual assault, not physically injurious but nevertheless violating, from a man old enough to be my grandfather. She explains her silence so far as cowardice in the face of going into legal battle with a senior Supreme Court judge. She said, it is often one person's word against another, a young lawyer against a senior advocate. There is an imbalance of power going on here. She says in her blog that she felt she should now speak up to prevent a repeat with other girls. In the legal profession, sexual harassment of women lawyers, particularly young women lawyers, is rampant. What the Supreme Court said only a few months ago when it constituted a committee for the Supreme Court, very clearly the idea is that there must be representation in that committee from all the segments, including, say, lawyers or young lawyers or advocates on record, etc. And very, very significantly from Vishakha onwards, that there must be an external member. And that when you cannot sit upon judgment of yourself, it's a well-known principle in law. So it is a little uh, puzzling, although I think the the... Uh, Supreme Court has set this up as a panel and not necessarily as a committee because today there is no actual complaint of sexual harassment. But if there is truth in her, her allegation, then the Supreme Court has today shown a shining example of an institution which is not willing to look within itself. After framing the guidelines for sexual harassment in the workplace in the Vishakha case, the Supreme Court has now got a complaint against one of its own and the entire community is now waiting for the probe panel's report expected in two weeks. With Ketki Angre in New Delhi, Anusya Mathur for NDTV. We asked tonight, are we battling a conspiracy of silence when it comes to all sexual harassment cases? Does the absence of redressal forums and the fear of reprisals actually stop women from speaking out? Joining us tonight, Indira Jai Singh, Additional Solicitor General, India's first woman law officer. Brinda Grover, Senior Lawyer in the Supreme Court. Ranjana Kumari, well-known women's rights activist and Director of the Center for Social Research. Also joining us tonight, M.N. Krishnamani, President of the Supreme Court Bar Association. Indira Jai Singh, let me begin with you. Um, I want to read out to you what the intern actually says in her blog. She explains the delay in her disclosure by saying, as a conditioned member of the society, I had quickly gotten over the incident. But, was, but that was what worried me, that I had accepted what was essentially an unacceptable situation. I realized that the crux of my unease lay in my inability to find a frame in which to talk or even think about my experience. While the incident affected me deeply, I felt almost little, uh, little or, or no rancor towards the man. But my reluctance to wage a legal battle left me feeling cowardly. Now, I want to begin by asking you, in a sense, does this conflict, does this dilemma uh, sort of reflect the kind of conspiracy of silence uh, where no one wants to speak about sexual harassment cases, not judges, not lawyers, and perhaps not the complainants themselves? I, I don't agree with you. I don't think it reflects the dilemma of uh, silence. Uh, what it does indeed reflect is the subjective feeling of a person who has faced sexual harassment. And uh, it's a totally honest statement where she's struggling with her own conscience. On the one hand, she knows there is a need to go public. On the other hand, she says, you know, I don't wish to destroy somebody's life and reputation. And she, there she's being exceedingly honest. And I think we need to support her. She needs to take her time 
It is her decision. She needs to decide when she wants to go public on this. So it's, it's not about a conspiracy of silence. I'm here on television. Others are here. We are speaking out about it. I, I must tell you that uh, every single lawyer, woman lawyer in the country today is behind this intern and behind the issue. And the lawyers in the Supreme Court, the women lawyers are meeting, taking a decision. File, uh, they're going to uh, come up with a resolution offering her unconditional support. Well, it's very heartening to hear that. But Vrinda Grover, already there are many voices who are also questioning why uh, the legal intern didn't, in fact, take that final step of actually naming uh, the judge in question as well. After all, this is a fairly unprecedented situation. We're talking about a retired Supreme Court judge. Uh, I know, think the I answer think is very much... Yes, that question was to Vrinda Grover. Uh, go ahead. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. Please, yeah. go ahead. No. Um, I think the answer is evident both in the blog, which I think is also a very reflective post that she has put out there, where she is uh, talking and reflecting on what has passed and her own responses, as well as in the interview that she gives. She is not here trying to target anyone. She is not trying to tarnish anyone. Mm -hmm. She says very clearly that I am coming, uh, I am writing this because I want to A, express what is the process mentally and emotionally traumatic as it is that I have gone through? And secondly, that this is not an isolated incident. There are many others who have experienced sexual harassment in the legal profession. She refers to other people, other uh, uh, law interns and young women lawyers in her interview who have faced similar sexual harassment. And she in fact says that she has discussed the issue with her university to ensure that in turn, women interns are not sent to a person where there is uh, a past, a precedent, a practice of this kind of harassment. So she is not, what I think is clear by the not naming is that women are not out to lynch. Women are not making false complaints. Women are not doing this because they wish to bring anyone down. Women are entering professions hoping that they will have a safe working environment. And actually, she says in the interview in the blog, I can't recall which one, where she says very clearly that a Supreme Court judge of such high repute does this to her. There is, uh, you know, she's almost surprised and shocked that people who sit and pronounce judgments where they uphold human rights, justice, anti-corruption, and yet when it comes to issues of women's rights, gender, basic dignity of women, right. uh, uh, you know, these okay. lines are blurred.